hi dear students <clears throat> let's uh, discuss the questions of anesthesia that came in your uh, fmg cbt and uh, see you know that we usually get very basic type of questions in your fmg exams uh, but you have to understand that basic doesn't mean uh, that it's not it cannot be conceptual so we do get basic questions but these are basic concept based questions that we have seen in the last few years in fmg so i hope that you guys solve these questions and uh, i hope you have made them right these are very simple questions but at the same time they are having some concept like the first question is <clears throat> which local anesthetic has the longest elimination half life so when somebody writes the duration of action they can simply say that which is the longest in duration which will act for the longest time which will require less dosing what we have done here in the question is we have tried to change the language of the question sometimes a question might not be that difficult uh, but just because the language changes so our perception changes longest elimination half time so although it is talking about metabolism but what essentially it means is which has longest duration of action and we know that we have divided local anesthetics based on their duration of action into three types short intermediate and long and usually what we say is that short we get amino esters because amino esters are metabolized by plasma choline esterase which is a plasma based enzyme so in general their metabolism is faster and therefore their duration of action is shorter while intermediate and long are amino amides so even if you don't remember this classification you can still try to see that in the options which are amino amides and how do you identify amino amides all local anesthetics with two i in their spelling as compared to amino esters where there is one i in the spelling so it's a difference in the spelling that is the easiest classification in the world so let's come to the option bupivacane 2i lignocaine 2i mepivacane 2i procaine 1i so procaine cannot be the answer now we normally use lignocaine and mepivacane very frequently in clinical anesthesia that is an intermediate acting local anesthetic but we know bupivacane is actually most cardiotoxic this is a fact that you actually cannot forget because we have seen a question on this thing in the last few years so it is most cardiotoxic all right so we know for a fact that it is most cardiotoxic and therefore we can say that it is highly lipid soluble highly lipid soluble and since it is highly lipid soluble it has a very long duration of action it has a very long duration of action all right so the correct answer to this question would be bupivacaine correct answer to this question would be bupivacaine although theoretically we say that the longest acting muscle relax longest acting local anesthetic is dbuk while the shortest is procaine so these are certain fact based things that you should remember that the <clears throat> that the longest is dibucane while the shortest is procaine all right so this is about the first question that came in your cbt next is a very straightforward question a 57 year old operated for an open inguinal hernia surgery on the right side known case of coronary artery disease taking 40 mg atorvastatin aspirin 75 metoprolol sustained release 12.5 which of the following needs to be stopped before the surgery so we have the list of the drugs that you need to stop and you need to continue so let's look from the perspective of the drugs so the patient is taking atorvastatin atorvastatin is a anti hyperlipidemic drug will it have any effect on the perioperative setting no aspirin is 75 mg now we know aspirin affects coagulation but only when more than 100 mg dose is taken 75 is a very low dose and that low dose doesn't really affect the coagulation so can be continued yes metoprolol is a beta blocker which has no perioperative problem 
सो कैन बी कंटिन्यूड सो यू कैनॉट स्टॉप एटोरवास्टाटिन कैनॉट स्टॉप एस्पिरिन कैनॉट स्टॉप मेटोक्लोप्रोवाइड सो द करेक्ट आंसर वुड बी नन सो देन यू माइट वंडर विच ड्रग्स कैन वी स्टॉप सो रिमेंबर यू कैन स्टॉप एस्पिरिन दैट इज मोर देन हंड्रेड मिलीग्राम्स पर डे Apart from that, you can stop all other anticoagulants. That is <clears throat> low molecular weight heparin, heparin, warfarin, clopidogrel. Then you can, in antihypertensives, you have to stop ACE inhibitors, ARBs. and all diuretics except thiazide thiazide can be continued except thiazide thiazide can be continued all right so this is a rough estimate of an all anti all ohs and insulin all oches and insulin these can be <coughs> continued <coughs> which of the following drug should not be administered by endotracheal tube this is a question related to cpr normally we do not use endotracheal route of administration for drugs it's only when you are not getting an iv line it's an emergency you have secured the tube then you do it so that is in cpr five drugs can be given that can be remembered as navel naloxone atropine vasopressin epinephrine and lidocaine so you cannot give soda bicarb which of the following is most sensitive indicator of intraoperative left ventricular myocardial infarction so it is talking about a monitoring technique and normally for myocardial infarction what do we use ecg so for intra operative monitoring we use a combination of v4 v5 lead 2 but this is not very sensitive why it has only 96% ischemia detection what we can use is tee that is most sensitive what is tee it is trans esophageal echocardiography so you do a echocardiography of the myocardium but you do it from the trans esophageal probe so correct answer would be wall motion abnormalities on echocardiogram yes they are not specified whether it is te or trans thoracic but intraoperatively use trans esophageal st segment elevation in v5 v5 yes but it is only 96% sure appearance of v wave in pulmonary capillary wedge pressure tracing no decrease in cardiac output as measured by no so the most sensitive indicator would be echocardiography malignant hyperthermia is believed to be generalized disorder to permeability to malignant hyperthermia is a genetic disorder this genetic disorder affects rhinodin receptor and we know rhinodin receptor is involved in calcium transmission so the correct answer would be calcium so these are some basic questions that are asked in your fmg cbt and i hope you have solved you have given this cbt if you have any doubts if you have any queries you can always messenger me on uh, or insta dm me on anesthesia shorts by anshul that is my page i usually put up some high yield stuff there so you can look out for them and if there are any doubts i'm happy to solve them thank you so much all the very best